Okay, so hello every everyone. Uh, I'm Nuno, Nuno Cruz, I'm front end engineer here at Feedseye. And today I'm going to talk about semantic HTML and uh, accessibility. So, what's the uh, agenda for today? Basically, um, I'm going to, to explain why I wanted to talk about uh, this topic. And then I'm going to briefly explain uh, what is semantic uh, HTML. And then I'll move to, to accessibility. I will explain what it is. And basically, uh, some tip, tips or some, uh, some uh, or how can you avoid uh, some mistakes in the in the uh, in the web development? And I will also show you how how we tackle access accessibility at Fidzai currently. What we have been doing regarding this, and I will leave. The uh, and I'll end the, the presentation with some notes and facts. So, motivation. Okay, it basically started with a Zycaton project. And basically, a Zycaton project is a three day hackathon uh, for FIDSI employees. Uh, basically, here everyone can submit ideas and then uh, we join. We, we we create teams to to work on those ideas during those three days, and at the end we present all the the ideas, <coughs> and uh, we vote on the best the best ones. The last edition, uh, the best uh, projects uh, at the prize, and the prize was basically going to Singapore to one of the main events um, that FIDSA is going to be present. Basically, it's a Money 2020 event. Okay, so. Last uh, Zycaton edition, I basically submitted uh, an idea which, which, is, which was named Clickless Case Manager Project. So what is Case Manager? Basically, Case Manager is one of Feedsize products and it allows an fraud analysts to review uh, transactions. And the trans transaction basically is something like an on online order that uh, from a purchase that you, you did on an e-commerce site, for example. And the um, fraud analysts, uh, they are basically on the client side and they review, uh, they can review all, the, um, all those transactions and eventually, in some cases, mark them as fraud or not fraud, or <coughs> if, if that's the, the case. So, basically, the, the fraud analysts review a lot of uh, transactions per day and their main goal is to review as much as possible <coughs> in order to prevent or to catch some uh, fraudulent transactions, for example. And one of our goals is to make them life, to make their life easier. And basically by giving them tools to be faster on reviewing those, those kind of transactions. And, um, and that's uh, where my, my project enters. Bec Basically, what I suggested with this idea was to implement a set of keyboard actions for the most common actions that analysts do. So basically, the idea was to reduce the time that they spend going from the keyboard to the mouse and vice versa. And when I started implementing the, the, this project, I realized that it was hard to navigate on our, our application using only the keyboard. So I, I wanted to do a set of actions just using the keyboard and it, it was hard to do it. So I, I've started asking myself if our product is inclusive for everyone. And basically the answer was it is not, it, it's not because I can't at least uh, navigate using only a keyboard. So there, there are people who can't use the mouse. So it was not being uh, inclusive. And unfortunately, many of us, many of developers who, who do web who create web applications and so on, we are we keep forgetting about this this about accessibility, and. It, it's something that we, we don't 
usually uh, do or test our application. So I just want to ask you how many of you know uh, knows tools like uh, Axe? I don't know if, if for anyone. Okay, no? So it basically is Axe is a uh, Chrome extension and you can install it on your browser and scan your, uh, your web application to find uh, vi uh, accessibility violations. So it's pretty good to see if what you are doing is, um, is not uh, violating any uh, um, accessibility rule. And um, I also want to ask you another question. How many of you test your application using only the keyboard? Your web applications, no? Okay. And all right, so this is, this is what happens to most people when they hear about accessibility. At least I've been at a few conferences and when they speak about accessibility, this is what, this is what happens. People just get bored about that topic because nowadays we see a lot of people like talking about and release features like React Hook and they, they get excited about it but they forget simple things like accessibility, which is are more important than those unreleased features that are, are there. So, right. so my goal is, my goal today here is to create awareness between us about this, this uh, topic. And I hope that after this talk, you feel motivated to, to improve your applications or web applications to be more accessible for everyone. So let's do this. Um, okay, I'll start by give a little a brief explanation about semantic HTML and I will start with a simple example. So imagine that we are transcri transcribing uh, paragraphs from books to a web page. Okay, this is our, our goal. And this is basically our final result, what we want. We have a set of uh, paragraphs and basically, visually, they look the same. They, yeah, they have the same style, the same appearance. The only thing that changes is basically its content. So, okay, so far so good. And I don't know if you can see. Okay, so basically this is what the HTML document that I used to create that page. And there's a little thing strange over there, which is I'm using two different tags to represent um, the same thing, which is a paragraph. Okay, so the question is, are these two uh, elements, do they have the same meaning? And okay, the, of course the question is, no, they don't. And we can classify the L, uh, HTML elements in two different categories. Basically, we have semantic tags, which where belongs uh, elements like the, the paragraph element. And we have non-semantic tags, which is basically uh, HTML tags like the, the div one. And what's the difference between these two categories? Okay, basically the first one contains all the tags that are not, <coughs> that are not only used to show content, but also to, to show continue human readable formats, but also to tell a machine what is uh, what's the meaning of the of its content? While the non-semantic tags, do, they they just don't tell anything about its content. So it it's basically for for machines it has no meaning. Okay, so back to our example. Um, the question is: Are we using the the right uh, elements? And the answer is no we are not using the, the first one is not the correct one. We should be using the paragraph uh, element instead of the div to represent um, element, um, a paragraph. So I also did a test which consisted on scanning the, the page with a screen reader. And basically on the first case, the screen reader just starts reading the, 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 the contents of the element. While on the second one, on the paragraph, it tells me what it is. So it basically tells me, okay, this is a text content, uh, content and the content is blah, 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 okay? 
So it, it knows what it, what it is. However, HTML elements, the, the way we classify them aren't, isn't just a simple binary classification, okay? And to show you that, I'll, I'll, let's go back to our ex example where we're going to add uh, new things. Basically, we are going to add a title, navigation links to navigate between chapters. We are going to also add a footer with copyright information. So this is what we want. We have a title, the links, the contents, and the footer. Okay. And basically, this is the code, the, the HTML code. Here's to create a page. We have several elements. Some of them have text. Some of them have, have other uh, HTML elements inside. And the question is, do they have the same purpose? And of course, they don't have the same purpose. Elements like the paragraph, heading, and links fall into the category of content elements, while elements like body, header, footer, and so on fall, falls on the category of structural elements. And basically, the difference between, between two is that the first one uh, is all the tags that used to give meaning to its contents, while the second one is, contains all the tags that are used to structure or other elements on the web page to create some kind of regions on the, the web page. Okay, so summing up, we have semantic tags and non-semantic tags, and inside semantic tags, we have content elements and structural elements. Okay, as many of you know, HTML has, a, has also a syntax, and it can, we can have produce HTML documents with an invalid syntax. However, uh, most language, language have a compiler that basically tells you where the, the errors are if you do some, some mistake. But in this case, in, in, the HTML, uh, in the HTML case, if you open the, the file, the browser won't tell you anything. It basically, uh, most browsers tend to, to hide the, the problems by trying to fix it. So, for example, if you forget to close the tag, the browser will add that closing tag for you, so no problem. But the problem arrives when you use other devices or other software <coughs> other than um, the browser. So those, dev those kind of devices like screen readers depend a lot on, on valid HTML syntax. And I'm going to show you now some, some examples that they are very common out there on the web of um, invalid HTML syntax, okay? Just before moving on, anyone working for NOS here? Or anyone have developed? Okay, good. So I can say bad things about it. <laughs> Actually, it, the, the website is terrible in terms of accessibility, but we'll show you I'll show you later. And as you can see, that link over there, it's basically, if you click it, it opens the pop-up with a movie uh, trailer. And this is the code used to, to, to create that button. And I want to ask you if you can spot the, the error here, what's invalid here. Okay. Anyone? No? Okay, I tell you. Basically, we are using uh, we are using a span, and inside the span, we are using a div, and that's not valid because spans are inline elements, and they don't contain they can't contain uh, block elements. The other way around will be okay, but this way, no. Besides that, this has no information about semantics. Another thing I've also searched. So basically the last one is very common out there. If you search, it's very easy to find people who do these kind of things. And basically this one is from a govern governmental website. And th that menu on the left, let's see how they, they implement it. And basically, okay, it looks like it's okay, a div, you have an order list, but inside an order list, you have a div. Like, 
another list is supposed to have uh, list items inside, not divs. And like, this is the most what I have thing that I, I've seen out there. Like, I just don't get it, the purpose of it, but okay, no problem. And besides that, it's not even accessible, ne not, neither have any kind of um, semantic information. So, okay. To closing this topic, basically, semantic HTML is HTML that introduces meaning to web page or web application, making its content accessible by both humans and machines. So basically, that's the definition of semantic HTML. And you also, uh, you, you should give priority to this kind of elements in favor of the, in, um, favor of the non-semantic ones. So if you can use it, please always prefer the semantic elements, okay? So let's talk about accessibility. And when usually when we, you, we hear about accessibility, the first thing that comes to our minds is um, people with disabilities, right? But I, I found this definition uh, a really good one because it describes accessibility in such a, a, a simple way. It's basically accessibility is the practice of making the web accessible by as many po people as possible, no matter of their circumstances or ability, being it people with disability, people with uh, slow internet connection, with mobile devices, any kind of, of person. That's what, is <coughs> what it means being accessible, <coughs> okay? And one way to achieve that is basically making correct use of uh, HTML semantic. But that's not enough, because if you just use HTML, that's not uh, enough to produce uh, um, what we want the, the application to be. So it's, there's that, that guys that we call designers, that kind of persons that we actually are, <laughs> we have one over there. <laughs> <laughs> And basically, they like create those weird things, and they are always like um, they are like always trying to make our lives difficult. But in the end, what they want is like uh, to to provide users with a good experience and with a good um, with a good application design. And basically, to meet those design requirements, we have to 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 use. CSS and JavaScript and so on. But if you use it incorrectly, it, it can uh, hurt accessibility. So here are a set of uh, things that you should or shouldn't do uh, regarding um, using CSS or JavaScript in our application. So the first thing is, please don't change the standard text uh, content stru structure of your um, application. Basically, what this means is there are uh, cases where you pick on a uh, adding element and you just basically change its font size or other kind of things, and that in the end loses its meaning. So, compared with, for example, with a paragraph or a span, they look exactly the same. That, that's not the, the goal. If you if you want to change the, those kind of, of style, fonts, uh, colors, whatever, please make sure that you at least um, make them different from other elements. Okay, another thing is don't mess with links. One thing that the people do is like override this, the style for when you visit a link that leaves the, the link with a different color. If you want to change the color, please like at least keep the, that, that behavior, okay? You can change the color, but keep the, the visitors uh, there because they are really important for persons who <coughs> rely on, on these kind of things. And, and please don't, don't, uh, don't delete the, the, or don't make the outline equal known because that's meant. When we are navigating on a page, we want to see like the, where, where am I, right? The same happens for form elements. So when I'm filling the form, I, if I would just want to use the keyboard, please, I just, most of the times I want to use the keyboard, so please don't remove the, the focus from the, the elements. Treat them with some respect and keep the visual feedback for the user, okay? And 
choose your colors properly. Um, make sure that your text color and your background, background color have enough contrast <coughs> so, it can be uh, so it can be accessible and people with maybe with uh, visibility, um, with vi uh, vision disabilities can, can actually see the, <coughs> the, the text. Make your apl application unbreakable. One thing that people with, um, with vision disabilities or whatever do is like control plus to, to increase the, the size of the font. And I don't know if you ever tested your application by increasing the size of the font, but it can break the, the, the application completely. So make your application like unbreakable to those, those kind of things. Make it responsible, OK? And don't abuse on keyboard events. There are default behaviors <coughs> for certain uh, keyboard events. If you override them, please make sure that you at least guarantee that you are doing, you are keeping the, the default behavior. And the last thing is find an alternative for mouse events, which is basically make sure that your application, application <coughs> you, we can navigate your application using just the keyboard. There are people, there are persons, people who, who can't use the, the, the mouse. But is that enough? And the question is, uh, the answer is no, because once again, that guy oh, it just left. I, I thought I think that he didn't like the, the what I say about designers. But basically, <coughs> the design requirements uh, we have design requirements, and they l really like to make those complex elements and stuff. And well, most most browsers don't neither support that kind of elm that kind of elements. Or we have like or they or their designs. Basically, they have elements like select or pickers that that are like completely different from the default behavior. Or the browsers uh, across browsers, they don't have the same um, the same style. So to keep to make sure that our application is cons consistent, um, we have to probably build our own custom elements. And what's the problem with that? Most of the times, we use elements that are not accessible, neither, or we use elements that don't have meaning. So it's very, very common to find things like selects, who are basically implemented only using divs. And for browsers, they don't know what, what it is. So you are basically breaking the, uh, the, the website accessibility. So to miti mitigate this problem, the W3C specified a set of HTML attributes named IA um, area. And basically, they, are, they can be applied to HTML elements to provide more semantic to, to it. And they define three features. One of them is the rules, and basically defines what an element is or does. There are some attributes like the, the role attributes that can have values th which, may, which basically makes the, the element, which gives uh, meaning to the element and overlaps to some existing elements. For example, the role navigation, we have a tag for navigation, but for some reason, I don't know why, we, want, we, we don't want to use uh, the nav element. You can also use, for example, a div with the role navigation. So the browser will look at that element and or screen reader, we look at that uh, that element, and it knows that it is a um, it is a it, it is a navigation. And we have other attributes that are just complementary to H HTML, like the um, the role banner. Okay, basically, it is a a banner. In this link, um, we have list we have the list of all av available uh, attributes, or in this case, roles. And the second feature is our properties. Basically, they define um, properties of, of elements, which, which basically can give them extra semantics. And one specific case, and I, this one is very interesting because um, we have an area attributes named labeled by. 
And basically what, is, what it does is to, you can define, uh, we can uh, give an element uh, this attribute and say that this element is labeled by another element. You can do that with the, the for attribute that exists in HTML, okay? But there's a, uh, a particular thing here. With this area labeled by, <coughs> you can say that a specific element is a label of one or more elements. So imagine that you, you have a form where you, can, uh, where you have two date pickers that represent a, an interval of time. And you can say that a specific label is a label for those two elements. With the, the for attribute, you couldn't do that. And the last one, the last feature is the states, and basically they, they define the, the, the state of an element. So basically you can have things like uh, area disable, which says, which, which, which says that uh, if an element is disabled or not, or you also have the check, uh, area checked, to say if an element is checked or no, is checked or no. So it's, it's very useful when you want to override the checkbox. I think it, it's the mo one of the most common elements that is overridden that we usually uh, customize. So you have uh, these kind of things to to give to give them states. So the um, the difference between properties and states is basically that properties uh, its value don't change throughout the application lifecycle, and the states can change throughout the the, the lifecycle. And the funny part now. Uh, I have here two examples. The first one is uh, uh, clearly an example of bad accessibility, while the second one is a good example of what it is to be accessible. So let's see what we have here. Okay, so just to give you a little bit of context, I'm trying, I'm going to try to, no, the, the goal here is trying to to buy a, a ticket, a cinema ticket, only using a keyboard, okay? That's the goal. And I've he uh, I have uh, here below the, the screen reader, so basically it, it's, it's also reading the, the page. And let's try to, to buy the ticket. So first of thing, we'll start to navigate. We are, okay, so we start by there, going over there. Stop, go, blah, 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 blah. I just want to buy the ticket and I have to go all the way to here. But as you can say here, as you can see here, I'm actually navigating the, the movies list, but I don't see the list here, okay? It didn't just, it didn't open. So, okay, wait, I have to go through them. Okay, I, I selected one and I came to this page. Oh, I just want to click on that button and I have to go through all the way through the, the, the other links. That's really frustrating. And here you go. Oh, shoot. I have to navigate the, the movies again. So I have to go all the way through the movies. I don't know which movies are. I don't know how many they are, but I have to go through all of them. So I just wait a little bit. Oh, shit. I have to go through all the, the cinemas available. Once again, let's wait. I just want to go to that button, buy uh, tickets. Oh, there we are. Okay, finally, I'm going to buy my ticket. And the problem is that you come here, okay, back, continue. Wait, what? Cancel the region? Why not? Okay, let's try to go there. Oh man, I can't go there. If you saw the, the, the example before, all those links that I have to go through to get to the movies list, basically these kind of things help us to skip that kind of, of, uh, of content. So let's continue. Basically, I just click here, navigating, and I'm going to click in one link. Okay, okay. Okay, so now I clicked on it and I'm going to skip <coughs> to the main content. It redirects me to the main page. I'm navigating the page. I really know where am I and clicking on things and so on and so on. So the, it basically that's the, the demo. So this is what it means to be accessible. 
Oh, one case that I didn't show here in this in this demo is trying to use the or trying to to make this demo using or uh, simulating people with visual uh, disability. So actually, that was that was I I've sh I've should done that. But I guarantee you that they are compliant with the uh, <coughs> the the color sync. So. What are we doing here at Feedseye? Basically, we are far, far from having a full uh, accessible application. However, we are going uh, toward that goal. And two things that we did was basically be compliant with the WCAG guidelines. Basically, these guidelines tells you or gives a classification to your uh, set of colors to see if they are compliant or not, or if they if people with some sort of uh, visual disability can actually see uh, <coughs> the text. And another thing that we did was to uh, scan all our application, all our pages, and fix all the violati violations reported by the, the AX tool. However, there's a lot of things, there's a lot of things missing. One of, the, one of them is basically navigation, navigating uh, or improve the, the navigation with, uh, without the mouse and improving the design layout to be, if you recall, if you recall from that point before, to be unbreakable, okay? To be, <coughs> to be accessible to in all kinds of devices. Here I have some screenshots that j just to show you about our, this is basically our, one of our projects, the case manager, the one that I've talked. And I have Two, two images here to compare. This one is before being compliant with the WCAG <coughs> guidelines. And basically this is after. I don't know if you see the difference, but there's a slight difference on the, the buttons color. Basically the first one, it is a uh, blue color. It was not uh, compliant. This one is compliant. We also have, <coughs> this is a, a page where we have a list of transactions and basically this is the the old version and this is a new version okay this one had a lot of uh, issues oh sorry and this one was a is a compliant one okay so to end the the presentation basically having a website that isn't accessible for everyone causes frustration lead to depression and even isolation. Like I felt, I actually f felt frustrated when navigating on the Nodge website. It was really annoying to have to go all through the, the links and can't even uh, see which uh, movie I'm selecting. And basically the, the World Health Organization estimates that around 700 million people uh, with 15 years or old <coughs> and older have some, kind of, have some kind of disability, where 100 million of them have very significant, significant difficulties in functioning. So if you recall the definition of accessibility, it's just not for uh, uh, people with disability, basically it's for everyone. So in practice, not having an accessible website affects all of us who use the the website. So we are seeing that, that a trend which is making more servers, services available online and you, you want them to be, to be used by everyone. So let's not leave the, some people uh, out. Okay, how can you like easily start to, to mitigate these kind of is issues? Please, if you if you never use it, you can also uh, you can please check the Axe tool, which is very cool. You have also the accessible colors, which is basically a website that tells you if two colors or you, you you can basically select a text color and a background color and see if those two colors are <coughs> compliant. You can also have things like in uh, ASLint for accessibility. And by the way, if you if you are interested interested here at Fizai, we have our Slint configuration of, uh, available for everyone to use, which inc also includes these kind of um, plugins. 
And when developing, developing your application, please test it with the keyboard with different font sizes and different screen resolutions. Okay. So it's basically it's up to us to invert this problem and try to make the products that we develop accessible for everyone. And we have the tools and the power to make the world a little bit better and inclusive. So let's stop ignoring this, this problem and contribute to, a, to actually have a, a better accessible web. Thank you, everyone. And by the way, this is our tech blog. You can check it out. I, I'm actually writing the, the tech blog about this, this talk. Um, on the tech blog, I will also share some links we, uh, for uh, websites that gives you hints about how to create your custom elements um, and make sure that those custom elements are accessible. And I will also have more examples uh, about, about this topic. So thank you. Thank you.